All right, I have made here a Lewin clock. These are the hands, and this is the face. So the question I've set out to answer here is whether Kirchhoff's law holds in the case of a varying magnetic field. Kirchhoff's law basically says that when you have a loop path of circuitry, all the voltage produced in it, summed up, should be the same as all the voltage dropped in it, summed up. So if you, if this was a voltage producer and this was a voltage producer, if you sum those up, the voltage, total voltage produced would be the same as the total voltage dropped if you summed up the voltage dropped across all the voltage dropping components. So I have set up this, which is an electromagnetic coil running at 40 kilohertz, about 700 millivolts per turn. And I have two half turn windings. And here is a thousand ohm resistor represented by this 900 ohm resistor. And here is a hundred ohm resistor represented by this 100 ohm resistor. This allows me to measure voltages between any two points on here, either across the resistors or across a segment of the copper winding. And they run in a path which is at right angles to the active orientation of the magnetic field, so hopefully no magnetic field will be induced into my probes. And this is just a stereo jack here, and this is so it's a pivot. And then it goes down through the coax to the oscilloscope. So this black one is my negative lead, the shell or the shield of the coax. And the positive is the red one. And we will be measuring clockwise. So I'll always be measuring with my red clockwise of the black across any um, circuit element, whether it's this inductor or a resistor. And you can see when I measure um, clockwise, we get a positive um, correlation. The blue is the reference signal for keeping the scope synchronized. And the yellow is what we're measuring. So you can see the more we measure, the stronger signal we get. If I reverse these, see then it goes negative. So we can measure positive and negative voltages all around this dial. So let's get started. Let's first measure the right hand resistor. Oh, we could actually get a little bit closer in there. Come on. Oops. There we go. We're measuring clockwise across the resistor on the right-hand side. And we are getting... Looks like about 660... Minus 660 millivolts. So that's the right-hand resistor. What did I say? 660 negative MV. Okay. Now let's measure the bottom copper trace. So I'm going to start just on the copper there. And I'm going to measure... Just the bottom copper half turn. And now it looks like we are getting... See, we're looking at that voltage right there, which is the voltage of the yellow trace at the peak there. 
So it looks like we are getting about usually around 350 millivolts. Okay, positive. So this is the bottom copper trace. So bottom copper 350 millivolts. Now let's measure the left hand resistor. So I'm going to Turn that up, yay so. You can almost see the 100 ohms on that resistor. 10000 is 100 times 0. Okay, so now, let me gain this up a little. Okay. I turn this stupid fluorescent light out, it'll get rid of those spikes. So it looks like we're rating minus 60, well, minus 61 on average. Okay, so the left hand resistor is reading about minus 61. So left hand resistor minus 61. MV. Okay, now let's measure this top half turn. So I'll move that up there. Move my positive probe here. Oops, just about there. See? Oh, now we got a nice strong signal. So turn back down this gain here. Oops, get it in in range looks like let's call it 380 well 370 380 let's call it 378 just kind of a an average 378 millivolts positive for the top copper okay 370 eight millivolts. Okay, we have now measured the voltage either produced, dropped, produced, or dropped across all four circuit elements in this path circuit. And this is operating, by the way, at, oh, almost 41 kilohertz. You can see there. Okay. So now, let's add up the total voltage dropped. Minus 721 millivolts. Let's add up the total voltage induced. Very interesting. The voltage dropped is 721 millivolts minus, and the voltage induced is 728. That's within 7 millivolts of each other. So you can see the total sum is going to be 7 millivolts, or minus 7 millivolts, whatever. But that is within about that is within 1% of the total loop voltage. And since this scope is an 8-bit scope, that means the value from 0 to maximum is only 128, which means that it's really not even accurate to any better than 1% anyway. And it's a cheap scope. So within the limitations of the accuracy of our oscilloscope, of around 1%, not to mention that the resistors are only 1% themselves, and so on and so forth. Kirchhoff's law holds perfectly in this situation.